Greetings again and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel and today I'm going to be speaking about differential equations um, and try to help you as a layperson or as a person with uh, out being a math enthusiast yourself to understand exactly what they are. So let's begin. Now, um, if we take a look at, there are many sites on the internet. I chose this one. It's one of the popular ones that pops up first and it says differential equation is an equation with a function and one or more of its derivatives. Okay, well, it's more or less true because uh, <clears throat> differentials are part of a derivative and certain equations um, are written in such a way that it, it might appear that there is only one differential, but there are always actually two differentials in any given equation, even though they're part of the same derivative. So this definition here is not really a very nice one, but uh, I'll get back to it shortly and I'll show you uh, exactly what the definition is and then proceed to uh, give you a little demonstration here of all these things. So, um, this site here tries to give you an example of how we use differential equations and the most common is the one with the population expressed as a function of time so and normally in any in any such equations we always have the exponential function the natural exponential function which is e which is known as e Okay, so it's the constant E. And uh, that's pretty much what this site says. And because it's not important, I'm going to close it. There's, oh, oh, there's one other problem here. Um, in this definition, here, it says one or more of its derivatives. But if you go to the link, uh, a derivative has nothing to do with change in anything. So this definition here, which is ubiquitous in the mainstream, is actually wrong. Nothing actually changes at any time ever. So let's... Close that, get it out of the way, and look at what is the differential equation. So, I suppose that quite simply, an, it, a differential equation is an equation that contains differentials. So, what are differentials? There are finite differences that are parts. Uh, there are parts one finds in a finite difference quotient. Okay, so the finite differences do not change, right? There's nothing about change there. And they're, they're, they're basically the parts one finds in a finite difference quotient, which we call a derivative. And it represents a given tangent line slope as rise over run, as you see over here. So dy and dx, and dx are examples of differentials. They're just finite differences, right? Not a change in y over a change in x, just a finite difference. Because the y's and the x's for any given uh, smooth function haven't changed in past perpetuity and they're not changing in future perpetuity, future perpetuity either. So a, a differential equation is not a rate of change or an instantaneous rate or any of the usual gibberish you learn in mainstream mathematics. Okay, so it's really just, it can be called a rate or a proportion or even just a fraction of symbolic values. It has nothing to do with any kind of change. But in order to pass your exams, you need to understand how to relate this gibberish to what is actually meant in reality. And I'm not going to do that in this video because I've done it in many other videos and I've also explained what are differentials in previous videos. I encourage you to go and watch those videos. So the example that one looked at on that website is natural growth. So uh, this is normally expressed as a function of time, so n would be the number of people in the population, and a would be the initial population, and this would be the function that is expressed in terms of time. So nt is a function of time, and its derivative, this red curve, is also a function of time. And we can see that all, uh, d, that, all that dn dt is, is just the slope of this tangent line at any given point, okay? It doesn't change. So these are the finite differences, by the way, 10.884 over 7.296, okay? Those are dy and dx, exactly. Um, at least in the new calculus, 
these work exactly in your bogus calculus you've got the problem of limits but we're not, i'm not going to talk about that either because i've talked about it in previous videos so what mainstream academics do is they take uh, this function here which you see dn or 1 over n times dn because that's exactly what that means a and yes dn is a symbolic value is equal to r which is uh, the supposed growth rate it's it's a it's just a some constant like 0 0.1 or something else and uh, uh, multiplied by the differential dt so in this case uh, because dt is a differential involving time one might think of it as a rate of change but it's strictly speaking not a rate of change because it still belongs to this function n of t is equal to a e to the rt so to solve this, uh, in order to find an original function, if we don't have n of t and we're just given the differential equation, we integrate. First of all, this uh, integration process is the most common. It's called separation of variables. It's the one you'll love the most because it's easiest. So you, you s simply take the original differential equation, which is dn dt is equal to r, Okay, in other words, this one is equal to Rn. Dn dt is equal to Rn. And you multiply, you divide both sides by n and multiply both sides by dt, just as you would values. And then you integrate both sides. And by so doing, you end up with the logarithm of n is equal to Rt plus c, which, of course, if you uh, rearrange this or take uh, both sides to base e, then you have the original expression of the function in terms of time which is equal to e to the rt plus c and of course this here is also equal to e to the c times e to the rt meaning that we can just say that e to the c is some constant and we'll call that constant the initial population so that's all they basically do as far as this is concerned okay and when you move this point along on the original function it gives you the approximate value of the population so if we started at time zero we have 10, and if we move to time t equal to t7, we have approximately 20. We have 20 individuals because you can't have a fraction of a, an individual, okay? So that's pretty much it as far as the explanation goes. And now, you know, a lot of emphasis is placed on finding the derivatives. And you think, wow, so do all these values, uh, they go on to become innumerably many. But if you had to consider this in terms of angle slope and not rise over run, so if, if for example, dy to dx was expressed as a function of angle slope, then really what you'd have is, if you move it anywhere along the side, you'd have a function whose range always falls between pi over 2 and minus pi over 2. And in this case, it's 0 and, my, and pi over 2, okay? So in this case, you have the special function where if you move it anywhere, let's put the trace on. So if you move this anywhere along here to find the derivative, it always lies between uh, y equals 0 and y equal to pi over 2, okay? So it's always inside here, all the derivatives in that range. So, and this is true of any particular function. Doesn't matter what function it is. Now, just to clear up one last thing, um, in the original definition that I read out to you on the, on the, on the web in that Matthews Fun site, it talks about the, uh, talks about the derivative as as a function, as a differential function, uh, it talks about the differential function as containing one of its derivatives, but it doesn't have to be a derivative of the function itself. It can be a derivative of any other function. It doesn't particularly have to be a derivative of that particular function. So as long as the, <clears throat> as long as the y's were equal, then you'd have a valid differential equation. So also parts of the function uh, can be expressed in the form of a second or third or fourth derivative. So you'd have an ordinary differential equation of a certain degree. So that's pretty much it. 
I hope uh, you've learned something from this and that you now understand what is DE. And just to recap, it's simply an equation that contains differential, at least two differentials, okay? Cannot contain one, and it cannot contain an odd number. In other words, if you had two derivatives with, de with many variables, then you'd have possibly at most four differentials. So there are finite differences and have nothing to do with change or rates of change or anything like that. Because if you look at your function, they're always expressed in terms of the tangent line slope. So if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, become a subscriber, visit my Odyssey site and donate money and credits if you so wish. I'll place a link to that in the details section. Tell your friends about my site, spread the news, and I'll be chatting with you hopefully soon. My name is John Gabriel. Till next time, goodbye.